Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about stages. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are the typical stages in the career of a software engineer? Well, there's a few paths that I usually see people take and I'll try my best to give some type of, I mean, everybody's path is a little bit different, but I, I think I should be able to give you a rough idea. So usually it starts off by you being a by rookie wannabe programmer or like you have no experience, you've never done any type of work and the first stage for you is going to be to become a junior software developer. Now the junior software developer is a role where we usually, this is not always accurate because as I've said in a few other videos, it's very subjective when in terms of time and skill and so forth where you are and you kind of have to understand that it's going to be a little bit different for every company and for every region. But roughly, if you have less than two years of work experience at the very least, you are considered to be a junior software developer, assuming of course that you actually have had your first job, uh, you've done any type of professional work. And so that's going to be your first stage. The first stage is to just get to a point where people are willing to pay you for software skills or for, for writing code or whatever you're going to do. And that is going to be tough uh, for a lot of you. Uh, for a lot of people it is tough because the industry wants people who are higher up than that. They want experienced developers for the most part. And very few companies are interested in training junior developers. Some of them are, but not enough. So that's going to be the first stage. You're just learning how to code. You got your first job. You're shadowing people, trying to just survive. You're going to feel completely overwhelmed. You're going to feel as if you're the dumbest motherfucker who ever lived. And you're going to feel a lot of stress in the beginning of things. But it's going to get better. And then you progress to the sweet spot usually. Well, depending on how you look at it. Where you become a mid-level developer. And a mid-level developer is a person, you're going to get there, uh, you mean some people who are really, really good get here very qu quickly. But on average, you're going to be at a mid-level in one to five years-ish, depending on who you are and so forth and where you work. And as a mid-level developer, you are basically just at a point now where you can do the job. It's not like you don't have have to look things up or anything like that you're not necessarily a master but you can do the job I can ask you to build this thing for me and you can build this thing for me you don't know everything but you can be productive and for quite a lot of developers this is where they stop they the some of them stop because they have no interest in going further and some of them stop because they simply don't have an inherent ability to move past this point uh, because getting to the, the higher stages actually requires you to be more than what I like to call a code monkey. And for a lot of developers who are code monkeys, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be a code monkey. The mid-level is where they stay. And this is where the vast majority of, you, of, the, uh, sof of software engineers will stay for pretty much their entire career. Then you can progress to the next stage if you do decide to go all above like the mid-level and push it a little bit and you will become a senior. Now a senior software developer, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because in theory you could say that, well, anybody who has been working for long enough is going to be a senior. But the problem with that is to set a, put a number on seniority. What is the difference between an experienced mid-level developer and a senior software developer? Well, nobody can really say. It's it's really a, it's practically depending on who you ask. I mean, I've met companies where they say that the senior developer is just somebody who's worked for three years. And in another company, they said, "Well, you're not a senior unless you've been working for 15 years." So it's it's really hard to say. So I will give you the best definition that I can give you because the the thing is, years of experience does have a factor, but it's usually the quality of the person that determines seniority, at least in my experience. So an example would be, if you're going to progress to a senior level, now you have reached a point where you're not just really good at writing code for yourself, you're uh, actually able to influence decisions, you have 
some form of leadership skills, you have some form of influence on less experienced developers. Usually the juniors, they wet their pants when they get to talk to a friendly senior because they can they can smell the experience and skill in, in, in this person and they want some of that. They want it bad, it's like spraying them with pheromones. And usually you have stakeholders, they are they want you around because they trust your judgment. You don't just know how to write the code, you know how to direct the project, you know how to, what the risks are, you know what uh, the th what things are missing from the specification, all of this sort of stuff. This is what you really g get good at when you are a senior developer. You're able to think about more, a little bit more of a holistic picture than just the code that you that you are writing yourself. And that's, I think, the best description I can give you between the of as of the difference between a senior and a, a mid-level developer, because a mid-level developer does nece not necessarily have this. They might just be very good at coding, but they... Um, I like to say that you hire seniors as an insurance policy. You hire a senior to make sure that the product goes well and that the other developers are not... like, like, like that, that things are going to turn out well, that they're going to speak their mind and they're going to ensure that things stay on track and things get delivered on time and that there are no major unforeseen issues or something like that. And the thing is, you can't really ask a mid, like necessarily ask a mid-level developer to do that. One part is usually because they don't have the experience, they haven't worked for long enough and had enough mistakes in their career to figure out all of these things and in many cases they don't really care all that much like they they look at their job as just being about the code that they are writing so here give me a story and I will deliver that story but I don't consider all that much all the other things that are involved in software development so senior level is usually I would say this is now where it gets to the high end of where you can still call yourself a full-time software developer these are usually the steps so these three stages is, for most of you, going to be the thing that I, th I think that this will be the best, like the good enough answer to how your career is going to look as a software engineer, if you are continuously trying to get better at the thing. Then depending on um, what your ambitions are and how if you want to progress, because there are a lot of developers, they stay as seniors as well and they become like tech experts or stuff like that but you can push it even further and you can try to become a manager of something like that and you can try to become a uh, a uh, tech lead or a uh, CTO or an architect or something like that there's a lot of branches you can look at these first at least up to the mid level as the trunk of the tree uh, and once you get to that level you can either go and become a, a senior and after that you I mean you can branch out at any point that you should know that uh, some people feel like they need to go into management as a software engineer really really quickly but the thing is guys as long as you're really good at what you do you can you, that's always going to be an option if you have the skills if you have the people skills and the tech skills you can always transition and usually at the or the earliest time that you can transition from a software developer to a manager or something like that is at the mid-level when you're a mid-level developer. But you can also just wait until you become a senior and you get even more experience and then you can do even more stuff. You can become an architect and uh, manage, be more involved in the planning out of work and talking to stakeholders and setting up like long-spanning roadmaps for projects and stuff like that. You can be a human resources type of person or like a, a community manager type of character where most of what you do is that you recruit new talents to the roster of the company and you try to deal with their issues and resolve conflicts and all of this good stuff. And as I said, you can also just stay as a senior developer, become a master of something, or you can branch out even further and go into something specialized. That's It's really up to you. I would say that it's really only junior up to mid-level, which is like practically set in stone for every single software developer. After that, it becomes a little bit more like a branching situation where you can do a lot of different cool stuff. So what I want you to take away from this is that a the normal stages for career development for a software developer is going to be to first get to the junior level stage which is usually the hardest part for a lot of people that's where the bulk of the people that you probably talk to are going to be found they're trying to get into the industry. Uh, once you get into the industry however uh, 
you will need some time to ferment a little bit and solidify your understanding and your knowledge and that's going to take a little while and so after around one to five years you're going to be at a mid-level developer's uh, skill level that stage where you can produce results if someone tells you to build this thing you can figure things out you can google a little bit or whatever and you can figure out how to solve the problem and that's where most developers stay for most of their career and some people progress even further and they become senior level experiences which is usually the thing that is the gold standard in the industry that's what everybody wants to hire practically and some people go into management and become more of like a product owners or product managers or human resources people or they go in and become architects which is more about planning out work for multiple teams and things like that or they can become tech leads and team leaders and stuff like that there there is a, a range of different things you can do or you can just be an expert I could be the best at a specific type of uh, branch of technology or something like that and just stay a senior if you want to these are usually the options. Have a great day.